Welcome to Mission on the Mountain. I'm Kevin McCall, and I'm so glad to have you with us as we're learning how to communicate with God. In our last episode, we talked a little bit about prayer and getting started in prayer. And today I want to share a little more of, of ways to pray, how to pray, especially you've got the desire, you're ready, you want to learn. How do I go about this practically? And one of the best ways to pray as you're getting started is to, to pray the Bible. I mean, as we talked about in the intro, you want to pray from your heart, you want to pray from a place of faith, but sometimes we need a script. We need a way to, to get started. And what better way to learn how to pray, to learn how to communicate than to pray God's word. And there are so many different ways that you can pray the Bible. And sometimes when you hear people talking about praying with scripture, they can mean many different things. Like for instance, um, St. Ignatius talks about praying with scripture and that particular form of prayer is putting yourself into the scripture. So you're praying, you're asking the Lord through the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, to help you see, to understand, to, to know him. And as you're reading scripture, for instance, as you read the, the um, Passion of Christ, you put yourself in there. Are you one of the disciples with him in the garden? Are you on the street, part of the crowd, screaming crucify? Where are you? What does it sound like? What are the smells? It's like you're putting yourself into that, um, using your imagination, which again we said is your image center. This is a place where thoughts and ideas and pictures are formed. So they can easily be from yourself. Sometimes they can be influenced by the enemy. And oftentimes they are inspired by the Lord. So don't be afraid to let your imagination run wild with the Lord trusting him to lead you. Put yourself in there. Let it be personal. So that's one way of praying with scripture is just becoming part of the story and, and, and sensing, imagining yourself in there and what you're learning, what you're gaining from that experience. Being there, being part. A great way to do. Uh, another way to pray scripture is to what I would say, praying back to God, declaring back to God what he's already said. So for instance, in John chapter 16, Jesus says, in this world you will have many trials, but take heart or take courage, for I have overcome the world. So if you wanted to, to pray that back to God, you say, Lord, I thank you that even in this time of trial, even in this time of tribulation, I take heart, I take courage. You said to take courage for you have overcome the world. So God, I thank you that, that I am an overcomer in you, through you, with you. And you began to, to pray from that perspective. You're praying the Bible back to him. Again, um, John asked the question, who is he who overcomes the world? And he answered, he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So I would pray, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, therefore I overcome the world through you. I agree with what your word says. I speak this back to you. I stand on your word. That's praying the Bible, praying it back to God. Another great way to pray the Bible, especially if you find some of this praying with senses and with images a little bit foreign, or maybe you're even a little skeptical. It's okay. Start with study. Praying the Bible can be a, a form of study that the Lord can inspire you. It's great. The one um, Holy Spirit who inspired the writers to write down, ask Holy Spirit, show me, teach me, help me learn what was going on here? How can I glean from this and, and utilize these principles in today's world? So it's a great thing. I'll oftentimes be praying with the Bible, praying to know God and, and led to study out. What does this particular word mean? 
what are these phrases? Especially because these scriptures were written so long ago that even if you're reading modern translations, sometimes the words are so different that it's great to go back, actually understand the setting. What are the idioms? Um, and I said idioms, not idiots, please. Um, what are those idioms? What do they mean? For instance, an evil eye. What is that? Well, in that biblical term, the evil eye means being greedy. So it makes so much more sense. If, you, if you're greedy, get rid of it. Pluck your eye out. Stop being greedy. It, it, makes, it just puts things into perspective. So just because you are studying, learning, doesn't mean that you aren't praying. If you've got a heart to know, if you have a heart to understand, enter into that and then that can even bring you into those deeper levels where you might feel more comfortable beginning to put yourself there or to speak things back to God what you discover from that great way to pray also the Bible itself is full of prayers one of the most unifying Christian prayers that, that we know kind of across the board is the the sample prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer that's in the Bible and most Christian people pray the Lord's Prayer. This is great. But the Bible is full of prayers from front to back. You've got all types of different prayers. John 17 is a great prayer. Jesus himself praying for unity. If you don't know how to pray, don't know what to pray, you can jump in. Pray those prayers that Jesus prayed that are written there. Um, there's a lot of the songs of like Deborah and David and different people like Moses who burst out into songs of praise and prayer, read them, pray with them, re recite until it becomes part of you. Because remember, prayer, again, is a position for communication. So this isn't a magic formula. Because oftentimes we're looking for the right prayer. <laughs> Help me pray the right prayer so I can get the answer I'm wanting. But the whole point of prayer is to know the Lord, to know his heart, and to be... Um, positioned to be obedient and follow what he says. So those are just some great starting practical points for praying the Bible, praying scripture, and the more you get to know God of the scripture, that's going to help lead you into different types of form or into deeper contemplation, contemplation with the scripture. But then from there, what does that inspire you to, to pray with, to converse with God about. And if contemplation sounds a little difficult and challenging, trust me, it can be, it is. But I love what Therese of Lisieux talks about when she um, was dealing with the whole issue of, of contemplating the Lord. And she said it felt like it was so high and lofty to really delve into the depths of what the Lord is saying and what he's doing. But she said, when I look at the stars, I think of God and how big and how awesome he is, and that just inspires me. And I call this thinking prayer. And for me, as a beginner, it was like, this is great, because that contemplation, like clearing my mind, is <laughs> seems like it's one of those all things are possible, but Lord, help me not to doubt. Like to clear my mind is going to be a big miracle. But to be inspired by the Lord, to look at nature and like, wow, God, you're so big. You're so amazing. What are you doing in all of this? And just beginning to just enter into that um, different headspace with the Lord, that's a good thing. And that can lead you to deeper contemplation. Contemplation meditation kind of goes hand in hand. It's really just fixing your mind on the Lord, trying to, to put other things, other distractions away, and they will come rapidly and repeatedly. But it's just that choosing to return the focus to the Lord um, for whatever he's wanting to speak or communicate in that moment. And sometimes there is the prayer of silence, it's like when you love someone and you just want to be with them and words don't even have to be used. 
It's just the joy of being together and peace in that. So a great way to pray, a form of prayer, especially after you've been reading or thinking, contemplating, is just to take that pause. In the Psalms, you'll see a little notation. Oftentimes it's Selah, S-E-L-A-H, I believe is how it's spelled. S-E-L-A-H, yes. Um, and that, it's translated as pause. But as I was, again, studying this out, it was actually a notation for a transition in sound. So it was a pause to, to trans, um, transfer from one sound, one setting to another. So it's just like that little break for a transition. So when you think about silence from whatever you've been doing, that you can just take that, that pause to transition to what the next step is that the Lord has for you or the next item on the list for the day, whatever that is. Great thing to do just to, to be calm, to be silent. And sometimes that can change you just as much as, as the conversation can go. So that's a good thing. So we have praying the Bible. Another way that you can enter into praying the Bible and joining in with the prayers of the, the church is praying the Liturgy of the Hours. Most of these prayers from the Liturgy of the Hours are scripture. It's pulled scripture from here, there, and everywhere and put it together in a different sequence with um, some other meditations, prayers, wrapped into it but you can find that even online ibrevery is a great resource to find the liturgy of the hours and if you're joining in with that you're praying with many priests and religious across the the world who have taken vows to pray these specific prayers of the church every day so again if you don't know exactly how to pray where to pray how to start that might be helpful uh, again a, a diving board to get you in the water of prayer. So Liturgy of the Hours. There's also scripted prayers basically for any and every topic you can imagine. So there's novenas that you can find. There's prayers for healing, prayers for freedom, all sorts of prayer manuals. So again, if you feel that like you're such a beginner in prayer that you need some help that you need some resources and some aids you can google it i promise you you can find prayers for almost any topic um even looking at different books about prayer is there something that jumps out at you good grab that book read it see what the lord wants to speak through that there's so many different forms uh, of prayer that are that have been written down that you can just step in with, step into agreement with, that you are praying along with the ones who have written the prayer and with everyone who's prayed it. So you're praying with that company of believers. And again, you're praying, Lord, I trust you. Use even my little elementary prayers to do great things. And I promise you, he will. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. So you've got all sorts of written resources. The rosary, this is another great prayer. And that's, a, again, a way of, of contemplating, of praying scripture in a way, because all of those mysteries of the rosary are based from scripture. They come from the heart of scripture. It's really helping you walk through the gospels and pray the gospels. So this is another really easy way as far as the form now, to, to go deep into it and the commitment piece, I promise you that will take a little bit more because anytime you're doing something that's good um, in the Lord, that's helping you grow in your spiritual life, I promise there will be plenty of things to try to distract and dissuade you. So again, persevere. But the rosary is another great tool for learning how to pray a different form of prayer. So just think about these little ways of, of praying with the, the tools, with the resources that God has given you. And just practice makes perfect. Practice it. Whatever that little thing is, whatever those prayers of, of the Bible, those prayers of uh, um, the saints from before, 
just use them, practice them, grow in them, and watch what God will do. So I just pray that you are blessed in the name of Jesus.